this, uh, hey, you can't do that, because if you're an entrepreneur, um, that's what you hear all the time. Being, on, being an entrepreneur, being in the startup business, being a, a, comp a person that's funding uh, uh, startups, you know how risky it is. And I just saw this uh, yesterday, this quote from Jeff Bezos saying, you know, uh, reality is about 70% of startups fail. And, and you know, I, I've always considered a batting average. Um, one out of 10 will be great, really great. You know, two out of 10 will be pretty good. Uh, three out of 10, you may get your money back if you're the, uh, maybe the venture capitalist, but the entrepreneur might lose everything in it. And four out of 10, you're gonna lose everything for everybody. So it's, a, it's not a, a great, you only get in it if you're a great optimist and you know, you really have a passion for building new stuff. So EVAC started as a Kool-Aid stand, basically. It was a, an idea I had um, uh, when I was working at Samsung. And uh, you know, I couldn't get them to do anything online. So I decided I would just quit my work and go start this company. When we started this company, uh, these are some of the things that we heard people say to us. You know, hey, you can't do that for me. Uh, I have email and I guarantee you no one will ever buy a bag from me now. That was said to me by the president of Samsung, you know, a billion dollar company when I was trying to get him to put, a, put Samsung online. That was in 1997. Uh, people need to touch luggage before they buy it. You heard that countless times. Can't sell handbags or fashion stuff on the computer screen. You know, all this sounds crazy today because uh, you see it happening all the time. But back then, this is what people said: you need to be cheap. Um, you can't survive without raising hundred million dollars. We were. I, I was trying to raise a Series B financing. We raised eight million, and then we raised a, uh, twenty-two million more. And we were meeting with LVMH out of Silicon Valley. LVMH owns Louis Vuitton a bunch of uh, prestigious brands. And we, uh, they said, that's how much you're raising? And I said, uh, $22 million. And they said, why? And I said, because that's uh, where we think, what we think we need to break the company even. And the guy said, oh, you're going to get crushed. Have you ever heard of Boo.com? And we were like, uh, yeah, I have read about them. Well, they have all the brands even out, and they're going to crush you. We just put $80 million into them. That was the end of the meeting. And I went out with my knee shaking. Because I uh, didn't know. But, so Boo.com, it went under, took them 18 months. That was the LVMH company that was going to crush us. So LVMH didn't put any money in EVACs, but they did put 80 million and lost it within 18 months with Boo.com. The other thing was, uh, if you don't carry inventory, it'll never work. You know, we heard that many times. And so I believe, as an entrepreneur, uh, ideas are best when no one believes in you. Actually, that is an idea, right? It's when you're the only one that believes in it. So just know you're gonna hit those kind of hurdles as you're, um, as you're trying to make your idea come alive. Everything starts kind of ugly. And, uh, and it's okay if that's who you are in the beginning. Um, and as an investor, you have to have faith. And I know like I put money in 20 some little companies and a lot of them, what I, what I believe in are just people. Like if, if a person is passionate about what they're doing and they, I believe they've got a lot of persistence because that's what you have to have. And, you know, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to be persistent. I, I'm most likely uh, willing to jump in with someone. Um, one of the things you have to do, I think, too, as an entrepreneur, is build a big network of people. So events like this are great. You need to talk to everybody. Just talk to them because. Uh, when I remember when I was going to raise money for eBags at the very beginning, I thought, well, I could just kind of go out the street and ask people for money. And uh, then I found out there was something called an accredited investor. And I was like, well, what's that? And they're like, well, you know, a million dollars net worth and two or three hundred thousand dollars a year in income. And I'm like, ah, crap, I don't know if I know anyone that has that. <laughs> eBags ended up being one of the first four retailers that Business Week recognized as being a profitable uh, e retailer. Uh, Amazon overstock Blue Nile. Ebacks, and that was in the year, uh, December 2001. Um, and then as time went, we got recognized as the top e-retailer in the United States out of 400 different e-retailers. This is multi-channel merchants and pure place. You know, Land's End, LLB to um, Williams Sonoma to little ones like us, Ebacks. We were one of the first four, uh, five retailers in the world with ratings and reviews of products. By the way, that's another thing we were told when we were raising money is, who would ever write a review on a piece of luggage? Like, who would do that? And it's amazing, 20, more than 20% of people would do that. 
it was really high numbers. It was why people wanted to shop from us. So what did I learn during this time of uh, trying to get through the dot bomb and the terrorist attacks and everything like that? Well, first of all, uh, culture is everything. It's really important to do everything you can to, to build the culture um, to, that will uh, support your vision and so that people love coming to work every day. So mind over mind is one of the philosophies we have. These are the terms we used in the company. Um, too much money makes you stupid. I believe this to this day. If you get too much money, you could take the easy route to doing things. You know, you buy your uh, software instead of building it. When you build it, it's more creative. You know, you, you come up with things that are custom to you. I'm not saying you should never buy anything, but I'm just saying that too much money makes you lazy. You need to live longer than the learning curve. And that's a hard one because when you're when you're um, raising money, you don't always know how much money you're going to need, and um, you know it can run out. I've had it happen uh, three times in my life now, where I've ran out of money. When I was raising money the first time out in Silicon Valley, um, I went into this one firm. One of the was in the one of the partners uh, after I went through this long presentation it seemed to go pretty well, like 45 minutes. He said to me, "Hey." Uh, uh, so what do you see happening long term with the company? And remember, this is like 1998. And uh, I said, well, I, I think we could go public in two years. And he's like, oh, great, back to back. So we'll talk to you later. It was kind of like that, you know, we didn't call. So I, I thought, oh, that, would be, that wasn't what I was expecting. And I said, could I answer that one more time? And he said, sure. And I said, well, let's go out 10 years. If you walk down the street in any city around the world, 10 years from now, you know, whether it be Sydney, New York City, um, Denver, San, San Francisco, Beijing, wherever, and ask someone on the street, where can I get the perfect bag? If they say eBags, we won. And he said, stay seated. And that, that became our funding. 